Lesson 1 Rebellion in a Perfect Universe Sabbath Afternoon September 24 We are dependent on the Bible for a knowledge of the early history of our world, of the creation of man, and of his fall. Remove the Word of God, and what can we expect but to be left to fables and conjectures and to that enfeebling of the intellect which is the sure result of entertaining error? We need the authentic history of the origin of the earth, of the fall of Lucifer, and of the introduction of sin into the world. Without the Bible, we should be bewildered by false theories. The mind would be subjected to the tyranny of superstition and falsehood. But having in our possession an authentic history of the beginning of the world, we need not hamper ourselves with human conjectures and unreliable theories. Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 2, page 742. Satan is a deceiver. When he sinned in heaven, even the loyal angels did not fully discern his character. This was why God did not at once destroy Satan. Had he done so, the holy angels would not have perceived the justice and love of God. A doubt of God's goodness would have been as evil seed that would yield the bitter fruit of sin and woe. Therefore the author of evil was spared fully to develop his character. Through long ages God has borne the anguish of beholding the work of evil. He has given the infinite gift of Calvary rather than leave any to be deceived by the misrepresentations of the wicked one. For the tares could not be plucked up without danger of uprooting the precious grain. And shall we not be as forbearing toward our fellow men as the Lord of heaven and earth is toward Satan? Christ's Object Lessons Page 72 As Satan had led men to sin, he had hoped that God's abhorrence of sin would forever separate him from man and break the connecting link between heaven and earth. The opening heavens in connection with the voice of God addressing his Son was like a death knell to Satan. He feared that God was now to unite man more fully to himself and give power to overcome his devices. And for this purpose Christ had come from the royal courts to the earth. Satan was well acquainted with the position of honor Christ had held in heaven as the Son of God, the beloved of the Father. And that he should leave heaven and come to this world as a man filled him with apprehension for his safety. He could not comprehend the mystery of this great sacrifice for the benefit of fallen man. The most costly treasures of the world, he knew, would not compare with its worth. As he had lost, through his rebellion, all the riches and pure glories of heaven, he was determined to be revenged by causing as many as he could to undervalue heaven and to place their affections upon earthly treasures. Confrontation, page 29 Sunday, September 25 Creation, an expression of love. God's created works testify to his love and power. He has called the world into being with all that it contains. God is a lover of the beautiful, and in the world which he has fitted up for us, he has not only given us everything necessary for our comfort, but he has filled the heavens and the earth with beauty. We see his love and care in the rich fields of autumn and his smile in the glad sunshine. His hand has made the castle-like rocks and the towering mountains. The lofty trees grow at his command. He has spread earth's green velvet carpet and dotted it with shrubs and flowers. Why has he clothed the earth and trees with living green instead of with dark, somber brown? Is it not that they may be more pleasing to the eye? And shall not our hearts be filled with gratitude as we read the evidences of his wisdom and love in the wonders of his creation? Lift him up, page 67. The whole natural world is designed to be an interpreter of the things of God. To Adam and Eve in their Eden home, nature was full of the knowledge of God, teeming with divine instruction. 
To their attentive ears, it was vocal with the voice of wisdom. Wisdom spoke to the eye and was received into the heart, for they communed with God in His created works. As soon as the holy pair transgressed the law of the Most High, the brightness from the face of God departed from the face of nature. Nature is now marred and defiled by sin. But God's object lessons are not obliterated. Even now, rightly studied and interpreted, she speaks of her Creator. In itself, the beauty of nature leads the soul away from sin and worldly attractions and toward purity, peace, and God. Counsels to Parents, Teachers, and Students, page 186. Love like that which Christ exemplified is incomparable. It is above gold or silver or precious stones in value. The love that Christ possessed is to be prayed for and sought for. The Christian who possesses it bears a character above all human infirmities. The reason there are so many hard-hearted men and women in our world is that true affection has been regarded as weakness and has been discouraged and repressed. The better part of the nature of persons of this class was perverted and dwarfed in childhood, and unless rays of divine light can melt away their coldness and hard-hearted selfishness, the happiness of such is buried forever. If we would have tender hearts such as Jesus had when he was upon the earth, and sanctified sympathy such as the angels have for sinful mortals, we must cultivate the sympathies of childhood which are simplicity itself. Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 2, pages 606 and 607. Monday, September 26. Free Will, the Basis for Love. Every man is free to choose what power he will have to rule over him. None have fallen so low None are so vile, but that they can find deliverance in Christ. The demoniac, in place of prayer, could utter only the words of Satan. Yet the heart's unspoken appeal was heard. No cry from a soul in need, though it fail of utterance in words, will be unheeded. Those who will consent to enter into covenant relation with the God of heaven are not left to the power of Satan or to the infirmity of their own nature. They are invited by the Savior, let him take hold of my strength, that he may make peace with me, and he shall make peace with me. Isaiah chapter 27 verse 5. The spirits of darkness will battle for the soul once under their dominion, but angels of God will contend for that soul with prevailing power. Thus saith the Lord, Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contendeth with thee, and I will save thy children. Isaiah chapter 49 verses 24 and 25. The Desire of Ages, page 258. While we were yet unloving and unlovely in character, hateful and hating one another, our Heavenly Father had mercy on us. After that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. Titus chapter 3 verses 3 to 5. His love received will make us, in like manner, kind and tender, not merely toward those who please us, but to the most faulty and erring and sinful. The children of God are those who are partakers of His nature. It is not earthly rank, nor birth, nor nationality, nor religious privilege, which proves that we are members of the family of God. It is love, a love that embraces all humanity. Even sinners whose hearts are not utterly closed to God's Spirit will respond to kindness. While they may give hate for hate, they will also give love for love. But it is only the Spirit of God that gives love for hatred. To be kind to the unthankful and to the evil, to do good hoping for nothing again, 
is the insignia of the royalty of heaven, the sure token by which the children of the highest reveal their high estate. Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, page 75. Men's ingenuity, his judgment, his power to execute, all come from God. To God's service, all should be devoted. The principles of the Bible are to control the Lord's servants. His workers are ever to do justice and judgment, steadfastly keeping the way of the Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. The Upward Look, page 74. Tuesday, September 27. Mysterious Ingratitude It is impossible to explain the origin of sin so as to give a reason for its existence. Yet enough may be understood concerning both the origin and the final disposition of sin to make fully manifest the justice and benevolence of God in all his dealings with evil. Nothing is more plainly taught in Scripture than that God was in no wise responsible for the entrance of sin. Sin is an intruder, for whose presence no reason can be given. It is mysterious, unaccountable. To excuse it is to defend it. Could excuse for it be found, or cause be shown for its existence, it would cease to be sin. Our only definition of sin is that given in the Word of God. It is the transgression of the law. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4 It is the outworking of a principle at war with the great law of love, which is the foundation of the divine government. The Great Controversy, pages 492 and 493 Sin originated in self-seeking. Lucifer, the covering cherub, desired to be first in heaven. He sought to gain control of heavenly beings, to draw them away from their creator, and to win their homage to himself. Thus he deceived angels. Thus he deceived men. He led them to doubt the word of God and to distrust his goodness. Thus he drew men to join him in rebellion against God, and the night of woe settled down upon the world. Sin appeared in a perfect universe. The reason of its inception or development was never explained and never can be, even at the last great day when the judgment shall sit and the books be opened. At that day, it will be evident to all that there is not and never was any cause for sin. At the final condemnation of Satan and his angels and of all men who have finally identified themselves with him as transgressors of God's law, every mouth will be stopped. When the hosts of rebellion, from the first great rebel to the last transgressor, are asked why they have broken the law of God, they will be speechless. There will be no answer to give. That I may know him, page 15. Open your heart to the Savior's love and let it flow out to others. Remember that all have trials hard to bear, temptations hard to resist, and you may do something to lighten these burdens. Express gratitude for the blessings you have. Show appreciation of the attentions you receive. Keep the heart full of the precious promises of God that you may bring forth from this treasure words that will be a comfort and strength to others. This will surround you with an atmosphere that will be helpful and uplifting. Let it be your aim to bless those around you, and you will find ways of being helpful both to the members of your own family and to others. The Ministry of Healing, page 257. Wednesday, September 28. The Price of Pride. The work of opposition to the law of God had its beginning in the courts of heaven with Lucifer, the covering cherub. Satan determined to be first in the councils of heaven and equal with God. 
He began his work of rebellion with the angels under his command, seeking to diffuse among them the spirit of discontent. And he worked in so deceptive a way that many of the angels were won to his allegiance before his purposes were fully known. Even the loyal angels could not fully discern his character nor see to what his work was leading. When Satan had succeeded in winning many angels to his side, he took his cause to God, representing that it was the desire of the angels that he occupy the position that Christ held. The evil continued to work until the spirit of disaffection ripened into active revolt. Then there was war in heaven, and Satan, with all who sympathized with him, was cast out. Satan had warred for the mastery in heaven and had lost the battle. God could no longer trust him with honor and supremacy, and these, with the part he had taken in the government of heaven, were taken from him. Selected Messages, Book 1, page 222. Pride, self-love, selfishness, hatred, envy, and jealousy have beclouded the perceptive powers, and the truth, which would make you wise unto salvation, has lost its power to charm and control the mind. Do not suffer resentment to ripen into malice. Do not allow the wound to fester and break out in poisoned words, which taint the minds of those who hear. Do not allow bitter thoughts to continue to fill your mind. Go to your brother and in humility and sincerity talk with him about the matter. All heaven is interested in the interview between the one who has been injured and the one who is in error. The oil of love removes the soreness caused by the wrong. The Spirit of God binds heart to heart, and there is music in heaven over the union brought about. Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 2, page 529. The evil that led to Peter's fall and that shut out the Pharisee from communion with God is proving the ruin of thousands today. There is nothing so offensive to God or so dangerous to the human soul as pride and self-sufficiency. Of all sins, it is the most hopeless, the most incurable. Peter's fall was not instantaneous, but gradual. Self-confidence led him to the belief that he was saved and step after step was taken in the downward path until he could deny his master. Christ's Object Lessons, pages 154 and 155. Thursday, September 29. The Spread of Unbelief. After Satan and those who fell with him were shut out of heaven, and he realized that he had forever lost all its purity and glory, he repented and wished to be reinstated in heaven. He was willing to take his proper place or any position that might be assigned him. But no, heaven must not be placed in jeopardy. All heaven might be marred should he be taken back, for sin originated with him and the seeds of rebellion were within him. Both he and his followers wept and implored to be taken back into the favor of God. But their sin, their hatred, their envy and jealousy had been so great that God could not blot it out. It must remain to receive its final punishment. When Satan became fully conscious that there was no possibility of his being brought again into favor with God, his malice and hatred began to be manifest. He consulted with his angels, and a plan was laid to still work against God's government. When Adam and Eve were placed in the beautiful garden, Satan was laying plans to destroy them. It was decided that he should assume another form and manifest an interest for man. He must insinuate against God's truthfulness and create doubt whether God did mean just what he said. Next, he must excite their curiosity and lead them to pry into the unsearchable plans of God, the very sin of which Satan had been guilty. Early Writings, page 146 When the soul surrenders itself to Christ, a new power takes possession of the new heart. A change is wrought which man can never accomplish for himself. It is a supernatural work, 
bringing a supernatural element into human nature. The soul that is yielded to Christ becomes his own fortress, which he holds in a revolted world, and he intends that no authority shall be known in it but his own. A soul thus kept in possession by the heavenly agencies is impregnable to the assaults of Satan. But unless we do yield ourselves to the control of Christ, we shall be dominated by the wicked one. We must inevitably be under the control of the one or the other of the two great powers that are contending for the supremacy of the world. It is not necessary for us deliberately to choose the service of the kingdom of darkness in order to come under its dominion. We have only to neglect to ally ourselves with the kingdom of light. If we do not cooperate with the heavenly agencies, Satan will take possession of the heart and will make it his abiding place. The only defense against evil is the indwelling of Christ in the heart through faith in his righteousness. Unless we become vitally connected with God, we can never resist the unhallowed effects of self-love, self-indulgence, and temptation to sin. We may leave off many bad habits. For the time, we may part company with Satan. But without a vital connection with God, through the surrender of ourselves to Him moment by moment, we shall be overcome. The Desire of Ages, page 324. For further reading, My Life Today, Through Christ There Is Victory, page 317, and The Great Controversy, The Origin of Evil, pages 492 to 504.